afternoon. I'm Max Brantley with the Arkansas Times. It's Monday, November the 24th. Uh, I think today we will get news from the Ferguson Grand Jury in Missouri. Uh, there has been an announcement that they have reached a decision, so I think that's going to be the big news of the day. In Arkansas, Asa Hutchinson continues his transition. He announced a string of top staff positions. There are mostly people who worked for him before or worked on his campaign. Interesting to see that Duncan Baird, uh, the state representative who was co-chair of Joint Budget, is going to be Asa Hutchinson's budget director. He's widely respected on both sides of the aisle, and that's a, that's a good appointment. At the Capitol today, also, there was discussion of prisons, prison costs particularly. We have 17,000 people in prison, 2,500 more backed up in county jails. The Bureau of Legislative Research has done a study on things that can be done to deal with our prison problem. They start with a very expensive new prison, which prison officials think is going to be necessary at some point. They include outsourcing prisoners to other states. They include alternatives to prison and, and better community reintegration programs. The one thing all of these ideas share is they all cost more money, some more than others, but still more money, and I think that the, the budget doesn't offer a lot of give for even modest new increases in spending. We already can't pay the county jails for the prisoners we're holding. In state government today, too, the state securities department says that it's seeking to get fines and the end of registration for Steele Stevens. He was the securities broker who did hundreds of millions of dollars worth of business with Martha Schaffner when she was treasurer, paid her cash bribes, and in return for that business, she's been convicted and faces a prison term. He was given immunity from prosecution. The state at least wants to get a little money back by way of the fines that is also pursuing an action against the company that employed him for failure to supervise him properly. The Arkansas Lottery is in a still dispute with a major lottery vendor, vendor Intralot, on how much it charges to handle the state's online lottery games. There's a a deal was in the works, was supposed to be improved today, but then it wasn't at the last minute because Intralot changed the effective date of the lower rate that it was going to charge the state. This is going to become interesting in about the next month because the legislature has a competing consulting contract that I think will lead to a recommendation that there's a major change in who handles lottery games. If Intralot and the current lottery entered into a contract that binded them for three years, I think there'd be a certain measure of protection for the existing operation. If they don't get it changed in time, that could change. Speaking of the Capitol, there's been several stories, and I've written about it on the blog, you might take a look, about an idea suddenly that we need more security at the Capitol. Legislators and the Secretary of State's office are talking about stepping up security. We have already have only one entrance. It's open to the public. It has a metal detector. There's a 22-member police staff. But suddenly the interest in more protection is higher. Is this, I wonder, because Republicans who tend to run on fear and be more fearful of things don't know if that's so. but. Uh, I think that uh, I have the modest suggestion that we just allow everybody to carry guns out there. Sure we'll, surely we'll all be safer then, correct? There was a fundraiser in Little Rock Sunday night for Keep Fayette, Fayetteville Fair, and a good turnout raised several thousand dollars for the ordinance to preserve Fayetteville's civil rights ordinance. It's a hot campaign. It's going to be a close vote. The election is December 9th. Funny story uh, out of a group that's working for better pay and working conditions for Walmart workers. A Walmart store made what turned out to be a bad PR move. It put out a charity food bin for its own workers, contribute goods here to, to help Walmart workers make it through Christmas. Naturally, the group that's uh, campaigning against Walmart seized on this. They wrote a letter to Alice Walton saying, hey, I don't want charity. I want better pay at my store. And then they took a big model charity bin and put it outside Alice Walton's $25 million condo on Park Avenue in New York. Said, no thanks for your charity. Just pay us better money. Pretty good PR campaign. Uh, late Friday afternoon, after uh, we taped this, uh, they slipped out a Republican committee's report on the famous Benghazi scandal. It turns out there was no scandal at all, and most everything that's been said has been truthful by the administration. There's still some holdout Republicans that don't want to let go of Benghazi and will continue to use against Hillary Clinton, you may be sure, in 2016. But yet again, eight investigations have come up dry on that issue. Finally, there's a, a terrible drama developing in Searcy. 20 hours after the disappearance of a two-year-old boy from his home in Searcy last night, dozens and dozens of people with search dogs and FBI and emergency management people are looking for two-year-old Malik Drummond, who still hasn't been found. I, I hope that shortly before the afternoon is over that there'll be some good news elsewhere to report on that case. I'm Max Brantley. I'll be back tomorrow.